Hi, welcome. Here's your Saxon lesson 126 for today. You will need your um, your one high frequency word practice sheet, page 126. It'll have your spelling words on there. Spelling word list 25 are the spelling words we're going to review. I want to start off by saying this Friday we're going to be taking the spelling test for the words that were on 100 and that were spelling list 24 and then next week we're going to take the spelling test for spelling list 25. So I'm slowing down with the spelling test and try to spread them apart more so you have more time to study. That's why I skipped last week's spelling test. If you have any questions about that or it's not clear or you're unsure, please do let me know. Let's go ahead and go over spelling word list 25. The spelling test for this will not be on the, this Friday. The spelling test for this will be Friday the 23rd, okay? All right, 23rd of April, obviously. All right, moving on. Um, let's go ahead and go over our uh, spelling words. All right, starting with number one. Let's read together. Break, great, leash, scream, squeak, team, breathe, help, instead, leave, meant, sweat, thread, feather, sweater, gone, guess, laugh, any, through. Number 21, spread the leather over the saddle. Number 22, which year is leap year? Number 21, spread the leather over the saddle. I bet you're like, what? What they mean by that is like you, the saddle is like the seat that you sit on that's on the horse, right? So don't you guys, don't you, do you sit on the horse's back right away? No, you put a saddle on top of the horse and it's normally leather. The thing that you sit on and you hold when the horse is moving, okay? Yeah, it's called a saddle. Anyway, so that's what they mean. Spread the leather over the saddle. Uh, and then... 22, which year is leap year? What they mean by leap year is, um, ev no, it's, what they mean is, I'll wait. So leap year happens every four years. Every four years, the month of February has 29 days rather than 28 days. And that those years are called leap years. So if you were born on February 29th, which um, I have a family member that is, He's actually 30 something. He's or he's 30. He's 30 years old. But if you want to say leap years, he's only what? Uh, let's see, 30 divided by four. Sorry, not the best at math. So we make fun of him and say that well, he's seven years old. Uh, but he's not seven. He's actually 30. 30 years have passed. But he was born on February 29th. And that's a leap year because February 29th only comes every four years. Do you understand? Because February normally has 28 days in it. All right. Anyway, that's what that means. Uh, moving on. Does anyone have any questions on what any of the word, our new spelling words mean? Does everyone know what they all mean? It's important to understand the meaning of a word. Um, Brenaya? Scream. Okay, uh, yes, Dominic. Number three, leash, like the leash you put on a dog when you walk the dog. Okay, uh, Jasmine. 15 is sweater, like to wear a sweater. Uh, and we'll do one more, Dustin. Meant. No, number 11, meant. Like she didn't mean it, she meant to be to say something else. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. We have run out of time. All right, let's keep moving on. The reason, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this in the beginning. The reason I have my mask off is because it's important in Saxon for you to understand the sounds that I'm saying. Again, sometimes I still have it on, but it's because I forget to take it off. I am a safe distance from everybody else, so um, I think we'll be okay. Okay, let's go over, um, it's been a long, let's go over the Saxon or our English history. It's been a long time since we reviewed what we have learned about the history of the English language. All right, so let's see if we can remember what we've learned. Who can raise their hand and tell me what is the name of a popular story written about England during the time of knights, ladies, and castles? 
What was that popular story of the guy that used to steal money from the poor and give to the rich? Hmm. Oh. Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Good job. All right. What special invention marked the beginning of the modern English period? The beginning of the modern English period was when they, what? When they started using the printing press. Remember before when they used to print anything, it had to be written, written, written. And then they had the printing press, which is like a keyboard that they could type everything on. Um, what special, oh, that's, that's the special invention that marked the beginning of the modern English period. What became more consistent or was done the same way often after printing press was invented? The words started, the spelling words started to become a line. No, they started to become the same. The reason that sometimes words are spelled differently is, again, because we talked about it back then when they used to script or rewrite the words, like to print, to make a story, to make a book. They couldn't type what the author wrote. They didn't have a machine to type it. They used to just look, and then whatever they think, they used to copy it down. So sometimes the A looked like a U, but it was probably an A. But who knows? The person that rewrote it maybe thought it was a U. And that's why the spelling in many words is different. But after they had the printing press, then the spelling words all start to become the same because it's all printed on a keyboard. It's easier to read. It's not, oh, this person's handwriting sloppy. I can't read it. Do you understand? Okay. Does anyone remember how many long vowel sounds there are during the time of uh, Geoffrey Saucer? I don't think we talked about him. Um, there are, we have only learned five vowel sounds, but back then they said that there were seven. What? I did. I told you in the beginning, right? I thought so. How did the explorers on the ships that visited other countries change our language? How did they change our language? <coughs> They brought back new words from other countries. Remember we talked about our language, how it's similar to other languages? Because they brought back those words from other countries, like in uh, Italy, how they brought back uh, pasta and spaghetti and all of those words, and now they're part of the English language, right? All right. Or in Spain, how they brought back Spanish, some Spanish words, like... Um, uh, baño which is bathroom. Well, I guess I messed up. It, that's not English. But anyway, I'm going to move on. Who can name some of the inventions that helped English words begin sounding more alike? Because we could hear people in other parts of the world. Yes? Good job. Their television, telephone, the radio. Those are <clears throat> Those are all the things that helped. Can anyone describe to me what dialects are? What is a dialect? We talked about that before. No? I mean, it, you're right. It could be part of a story. But when I say uh, this person is from El Salvador and this other person is from Mexico, they both speak Spanish, don't they? But the one that's from Mexico, the person from Mexico speaks Spanish a little differently than the person from El Salvador, right? Yes, it sounds a little different, right? Yeah, that's because there's different dialects. It's the same language, but it's a different dialect. It sounds differently. Let's uh, bring it closer to home. Let's say English. The people from London, do they speak English? Yes. Yes, they do. They talk like this. Can you understand me? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. My impersonation is horrible. But they are speaking English, but do they sound the same as our English? No. no, because the dialect is different. The way the words sound is different, right? All right. <clears throat> Where in America would you notice a big difference in dialects? If I was going to, remember we talked about this, if I was going to compare the states in America with each other, what two states would be a big difference in the way we speak? What do we say in Texas that you probably don't say in New York? Y'all. Very good. Y'all. In the South, we speak a lot different than they speak up in the North. The difference between the North and the South, like New York and Texas. All right. <clears throat> From what language did we get the word umbrella in carnival? 
Umbrella and carnival came from the Italian language. All right, what other words came from the Italian language? We talked about it a minute ago. Bandit, piano, pizza, pepperoni, lasagna, spaghetti, all of those words are Italian words. Where did the words moccasin and teepee come from? Who uses teepees? Who builds? Who? No. Who? No. Native Americans, the Indians. The Indians, the Native Americans, they used to make teepees, remember? Hello? Teepees are like the tents that, that, that look like this, and they have the wood, and then they, they have it all tied, and they have a cloth on top. It's called a teepee. Okay? <clears throat> they also have uh, moccasins. Remember we said moccasins are the shoes that they wear? Okay. Can you name other words that came from the Native American language? Pueblo? No, not ringing a bell? Okay, we'll stop there. All right, let's go ahead and review our letter cards, picture cards, and sight word cards. Are you ready? <clears throat> let's start with our letter cards. Go ahead. Final stable syllable shun. Final stable syllable shun. Diagraph E W. Diagraph E W. Go ahead. What is it? <clears throat> Diagraph E Y. Diagraph E E. Final stable syllable shun. No, it's shus. Final stable syllable shus. Final stable syllable shus. Quadragraph E I G H. Final stable syllable tur. Very good. Um, you guys are kind of rough on those though. You have to. Make sure that you're listening when I go over these picture cards. Are you ready? Yes. Cry I. Cry I. Candy E. Candy E. Ring N. Ring N. Phone F. Phone. Leaf E. Leaf E. Thread E. Thread E. Steak A. Steak A. Not N. Not N. Nat N. Nat N. Wreath er. Wreath er. Mouse ow. Mouse ow. Soup oo. Soup oo. Cow ow. Cow ow. Bow o. Bow o. Rain a. Rain a. Hay a. Hay a. I need everyone's ice up here when I'm doing this. When I was grading your Saxon test, most of you guys did really bad on the coding part. You're having a hard time coding second grade. We have a problem. You have to make sure you are looking at the words so you can see how they are coded. That's kind of the whole point. Your eyes are looking up here, Miss Brenaya. Are you ready? Hey, A. Hey, A. Circles. Circles. Oil, oi. Oil, oi. Toy, oi. Toy, oi. Light, I. Light, I. Patch, ch. Patch, Giraffe, j. Giraffe, j. Bridge, j. Bridge. 
Lotion shun. Lotion shun. Soap o. Soap o. Did you not hear me the first time? That's a lap. Faucet a. Faucet a. Straw a. Straw a. Wallet a. Wallet a. Sponge a. Sponge a. Mission shun. Mission shun. Television jun. Television jun. Cashew ew. Cashew ew. Key e. Glue oo. Glue oo. Banana a. Banana a. Uh. Nutritious shus. Delicious shus. Delicious shus. Pie i. Shield e. Shield e. Receipt e. Receipt e. Veil ale. Veil ale. No, sorry. Veil a. Veil a. Slay a. Slay a. Picture chur. Very good. All right. All right, let's go over our sight word cards. You ready? Yeah. Read. Let's go ahead and look at our spelling high frequency word practice page 126 where it says spelling sound review we are going to write some spelling sounds next to number one I want you to write the spelling sound for tur tur like picture what is that class T-U-R-E, T-U-R-E. Next to number two, next to number two, I. I consonant, E comma, I final Y. I consonant, E comma, I final Y. Number three is Z. That's Z comma, Excellent. Good job. Number four is O. O consonant. E comma. O final. O W. O. O consonant. E comma. O final. O W. Number four. Number five. Television Jun. What is that? S I O N. Number six. O. L final L L. Looks like a lot of lines. Number seven. That's F final F F. F final F F. Number eight is d d final d comma e d d final d comma e d number nine e e e comma e final e e comma y E, E, comma, E, final, E, E, comma, Y. Okay, your paper should look like this. If you need some time to copy it down, go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, let's go over some review words. Next to number 10, I want you to write down the word protect. Protect. Mama polar bears protect their young. Or all mothers protect their young. <coughs> protect. Um, let's see who's going to help me. Amaria, how do you spell protect? 
excellent. P-R-O-T-E-C-T. Number 11, amount. 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 Uh, Jasmine, amount. Very close, you're missing a letter. A-M-O-U-N-T, amount, A-M-O-U-N-T. Number 12, strongest, strongest. Strongest, uh, J.C. S T R O N G E S T strong and then add est to the end strongest. Thirteen. Build. Build. Leia. Build. Close. You're missing a letter. Christian. Good job, Christian. B-U-I-L-D. Good job. B-U-I-L-D. Number 14. Built. Now it's not build, it's built. She built a sandcastle. Built. Like in the past. All right. Christian, built. Good, you just changed the D to a T, B-U-I-L-T, built. 15, clothes, clothes. Uh, Jacob Haney, clothes. Excellent. Who did I call someone? Oh, Haney, clothes. Excellent. C L O T H E S. Yes, ma'am. No, not right now. I'll let you go in a minute. All right, 16. Let's um, read together. I'm sorry, let's write together. You ready? The moon revolves around the earth. Period. So, what does this mean? Capital. Capital letter. So, the T is. Capital because it's in the beginning of the sentence. sentence. A lot of y'all in your writing, I was seeing you were putting small letters after that period and it was making me go. We are too late in the year for you guys to be making these baby mistakes. Okay. All right. So let's do it one more time. The moon. I'm sorry. Oops. Not moon. It's a word. Moon. Sorry. Let's try that again. The moon revolves around the earth. Go ahead and pause the video and write that down now. All right, echo these words and listen for something that they that is the same in each of these words. Echo the words pre-cook, pre-mix, pre-heat. That was bad. I'm going to try that again. Pre-cook, pre-mix, pre-heat. What is alike in all of these words? Pre. They all start with Pre. Let's look at these words and find out what is making the pre sound. They're behind my head. All right. What is making the pre sound, class? Everyone? P-R-E. -E. Who thinks they know what P-R-E is called? Something. Mm, it's a prefix. Good job. The letters P-R-E are called a prefix. Prefixes are similar to suffixes, except they are always added to the beginning beginning of words. In fact, the word pre means before. So this may help you remember where prefixes are found. Pre means before. If I say you have to prepare for something, that means you get ready for something before it happens, right? Pre means before. If I say, if it says preheat the oven, that means before you start cooking, heat up the oven. Pre means before. So prefix means before the root word, right? 
Prefixes are simply letters that are added to the beginning of a root word that change the meaning of those words. Let's look at these words again. What do you think prefix pre means? Pre-cook. What do you guys think that means? No, it doesn't say re-cook. It says pre-cook. Cook before. Very good. Pre-cook. Cook before. How about pre-mix? Mix it before. Pre-mix. Mix it before. How about preheat? To heat it before. Very good. Let's look at two other prefixes. All right, let's look at some other prefixes. We have underfeed, underpay, and underpass. What is the prefix in these three words? Under. So how about here? We have overfeed, overpay, and overpass. What's the prefix? Over. Very good. Uh, what prefixes do you see on these words? Okay, we already said under, prefix under, and prefix over. What do you think prefix under means? What does under mean? Below. It means below or not enough. So if you say um, under feed, that means you're not feeding enough. Under pay, that means you're not paying enough. Under pass, that means you're not passing enough. What does the what does over mean? Too much, very good, or beyond. So overfeed means you're feeding too much. Overpay, you're paying too much. Overpass, you're passing too much or beyond. Okay, under and over are two more prefixes. Their meanings are easy to remember because the prefix actually describes the meaning. Which refer to both, we refer both prefixes and suffixes as affixes. So if I'm talking about prefixes and suffixes, those are both affixes. If I say just prefix, then it's the beginning of the word. If I say suffix, then it's at the end of the root word. All right, so um, we are going to add these to our affix deck so we can review it in the upcoming weeks. We have these three words we're going to add. Sorry, I forgot to even show you. We have Pre, whenever we see this, we're going to say prefix pre. Prefix pre. Prefix under. Prefix under. Prefix over. Prefix over. Excellent job. Um, let's see. Prefixes are coded the same way as suffixes are, so we can separate them from their root word. How do we code suffixes? Box them. So how do you think we're going to code prefixes? Boxing them. So we're going to box... Pre, box, pre, and pre. Box, over, 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 box, under, under, under. Those are all called what? Prefixes. Very good. What do you think we should have after box left? What should we have left after boxing the prefixes, class? The root word, that's correct. We must always make sure a root word is left. Who can tell me the root words in these lists? What is the root word here, everyone? Feed. Feed. What about here? Pay. Here? Pay. Very good. What about here? Pay. Here? Pay. Here? Pay. here? Heat. Heat. Excellent job. All right, you may remember that I told you when root words have suffixes added to them, the accent generally means ge generally remains on the root word. When the root word have prefixes added to them, however, the accent may be found on either the root word or the prefix. Sometimes when prefixes have more than one syllable, like the prefix under, the accent may even be found on the first syllable of that prefix. This means that when you see a word with a prefix, you just have to try the accent on various syllables and see which one sounds right. Let's see if we can accent these words. Um, under feed. Where do you guys think the accent goes? After. Under feed. How about here? Underpay. Underpass. Okay, we'll stop there. All right, uh, now we're going to spell some words that have prefixes that we learned. We'll use the practice sheets again. Look at the back of your practice sheet and find number one. I want us to spell the word 
oversleep on the line. You're going to write oversleep next to number one on the back. Oversleep. Class, yes. how do you spell oversleep? O -V -E -L -L. Oversleep. O V E R S L E E P. Number two, prefix. P R E F I X. P R E F I X. Prefix. Prefix has the prefix pre. I know, sounds silly. Number three, underfed. Underfed. Remember, underfed, not underfeed. Not this, not underfeed. The difference is one E makes the E, eh, two E's make the E. So it's U N D E R F E. E D one E only one E. All right, let's read the high frequency words together in the box. Our, your, won't, would, heart, touch, special, science. The first hour is H O U R. It sounds like our, like our class, like a group of people, but it's not. It's spelled H O U R, which is like the hour, the the telling time hour. Okay, you're going to come up with two sentences using one word in each sentence. Should be very easy. On the back, you're going to code and answer the questions. That should also be very easy. Before I let you go, let me see. Let's go over some things. What do we do when we first see a word we've never seen before? We look for what? We look for suffixes, final stable syllables, the vowels. That's right. But now we need to look for prefixes too. So let's say look for affixes and final stable syllables since the word affix refers to both prefix and suffix. So next time you're going to say we're going to look for affixes, which means you're looking for prefixes and suffixes. When you're reading, you may find some words that contain both prefixes and suffixes. All you have to do is box the affixes and then make sure a root word is left. If it is, simply code the root word and you're done. Let's code some words like the ones you're going to code today. Um, or actually, you're going to code some words like the ones we've coded today. All right, that's all we're doing today. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll see you later.